being lost is sometimes good. And uh, Paritosh, let me accept the challenge what we were speaking uh, in a very subtle way. Uh, it's 2018. I think uh, we still are wrapped in terms of data issues, wrangling, data privacy, big data. The fact is there is a lot of sophistication happening today in analytics, data science, AI, and progressive companies are doing everything to make what I say, not AI first, but human first. So over the next 10, 15 minutes, what I would like to take is whole aspect about how organizations, which are data driven, are trying to really transform not only in a very subtle manner, each and every function of their organization, but in fact, overall aspect about consumers, suppliers, and the overall humanity. The fact today, I think when we talk about data-driven organization, there is one paraphrasing I would like to do. It's very important is many of the organization during the conversations I've heard they saying, and even the CXO say that we are data rich, information poor, insight staffed. I'll repeat again, data rich, information poor, insight staffed. Can you help solve our problem? What has changed in the last few years because of this whole digital detonation is, can you help us take the decisions? And uh, somewhere, I think, as human beings, let me make it very provocative, we are predictably irrational. And sir, you referred in your early talk that today many of our decisions we take are all about our intuitions and gut. That's a fact. But this is where artificial intelligence, data science, analytics comes to the picture. Let me show you with some examples what it means. <clears throat> well, I think uh, this is one fact I take this thing as very nicely that uh, last year I remember Paritosh coming and sticking to Reliance uh, when Mr. Ambani was there in NASCOM NILF. He made a statement uh, in the opening session that data is the new oil. I don't know how was the response of the people, but the next day the stock market, the script of Reliance went up by 10%. So it's a fact today that data is a very strategic asset for any organization today, and digital is the new currency. We are still kind of getting into that whole aspect, what's digital, it could be as naive as a Casio digital watch, or it could be as progressive as what's on this slide. It's all about transforming businesses, innovative product and services, and also about changing strategic and operational models. Eventually, that's been the holy grail of a very progressive organization who embraced data and digital. But as we always say that data alone is dumb. We have seen that enough instances that organizations today are sitting on raw data, they're still figuring, figuring out the reference architecture, the models. I think what is the secret sauce is nothing but algorithms. Eventually, you are beating data, you're massaging data to make insights, decisions, intelligence within the organization. And this is where the aspect of how one organization differentiates from another comes into the picture. Well, some of these organizations, what you see on this slide, are no surprises. I think beyond, as we say, asset light, digital organization, eventually each one of these organizations, while they are outpacing the competitive uh, growth within their segments, is an IP patented algorithm which is running for them. That's the fact today. Organizations today are nothing but as the management guru Ram Charan says, the math houses. Eventually that's what is happening today in the boardrooms that there used to be a phase where the board members used to take decisions based on the PL, the whole aspect about the financial prudence, discipline of the organizations. Today, algorithms are attempting to, attempting to take those decisions. And we are not far when we say that at some level, we are all at the cusp of algorithm economy. And this is where Paritosh, my challenge starts in terms of saying, look, it's already happening today. Think of the scenario as we trade scripts, stocks on a stock exchange. Algorithm economy takes into factors millions of algorithms by niche, boutique, startups, large players. Solving a business problem could be a supply chain, could be a talent acquisition, could be a customer kind of a churn problem. 
You go to that stock exchange or a marketplace of algorithm, buy that IP patented algorithm, run it, test it, make it a kind of a champion challenger model within your organization, and there you go. That scenario is not far off because eventually these algorithms are just going to make decisions very, very simpler within the organization. And this is where we say that somewhere in the boardrooms, somewhere within the organization, Mr. Algorithm will sit taking decisions on behalf of us, on behalf of the organization. But somewhere, for the naysayers, skeptics, there's always that feeling, look, will it displace jobs? Will it result into a lot of productivity issues? I don't think so. And let me give an example of what it means. <clears throat> I think, let's look at this aspect about why artificial intelligence is so much resonating today. Eventually, for the lack of definition, because there are a lot of connotations, definitions today floating around data science, artificial intelligence, the simpler definition is one, it's a sophistication of analytics. And me and Paritosh were just discussing that, look, analytics has been there in some shape or form from last 15, 18 years. Today, Artificial intelligence in the holiest form is all about mimicking the human brain. The ability to act, perceive, act and think is all about artificial intelligence and that's where sophistication in image, voice, text and video is resulting into organization embracing those aspects and saying this is where we would like to be as far as part of the data driven organization is concerned. Let me give you some examples now, very topical, very kind of contemporary example, how data-driven organizations are using algorithms for the betterment in terms of decision-making. This is one slide which is uh, something I usually pick up to say that, look, if we have to alter the human decisions, the chunk today is happening through our intuition, gut, and a lot of that also is also influenced by our spouses and friends. Let's accept. What if the decision making gets turned into algorithms taking decisions for us? What happens? Just look at this. This is what we say that a trifactor of better decision making comes into the picture. We are talking about augmented intelligence. We are talking about incorporating what we say human behavior which is a very often neglected but very, very contemporary piece today. And it's also getting very much optics because of Dr. Richard Taylor winning the Nobel Prize in terms of the Nudge theory, what he propagated. And there is one aspect of about how do we automate and learn. And automation is not about anything but realignment of human and machine. I'll come to the first aspect. <clears throat> Let's look at this slide, two examples. I'll take both of them very quickly. On the left is an earnings call, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg on the stage. Uh, he's in a different mode today in terms of the Cam Cambridge Analytica, Facebook, Ruckus, what everyone is aware. But what's happening today when we talk about data-driven organization? The non-obvious sources of data is today becoming very relevant. Earnings calls today are getting analyzed by analytics professionals by looking at the voice, video, real-time facial expressions, and really understanding is there be anything beneath and beyond the numbers. Any voice modulation, any lump in the throat, any kind of a, let's say, worrying aspect on the face is instantly captured and correlated, extrapolated with the numbers, what's happening in terms of the financial proje projections, which is still good enough. In every earnings call, beyond the CEO, there is a bunch of the CXOs present at the back. So if the CEO is making a statement where he's very bullish about some of the numbers and there is a bit of optimism about the financial projections, but if the CFO at the back is poker-faced, there's something wrong with the numbers. That's the extent of real-time decision-making happening with some of the organization. On the right side is an example of a U.S. retail chain parking lot in U.S. Well, this is not just to kind of look at the weather conditions or the forecast. It's about predicting the expected footfall and extrapolating in terms of what could be the next quarter earnings for that retail chain. 
This is where I think the data sources, non-obvious, what we say, dark data, is trying to make those differences. Other example, and this is something uh, many of you would have seen or heard. Uh, the gentleman on the right side, Saqib Sheikh, is from Pakistan. Uh, from age of seven, he's visually disabled. He can't see. He moved to US a few years later, and he's working with Microsoft. Microsoft and Saqib took an assignment where they said, look, let's make your life interesting. And every time he moves and goes out of his home, office, meet neighbors or friends, he wears these glasses. These glasses are nothing but having a very real-time image capturing mechanism. He taps on the stem of the glass and the pictures on the real-time basis start correlating in terms of getting the whole audio in his headphone on a real-time basis saying, Saqib, 10 meters ahead, there is a beige kind of a, let's say, jersey trouser, 15-year kid on a skateboard, wearing a kind of a navy blue kind of a jersey, would you like to meet him? Imagine the life for Saqib changing dramatically data decision-making on a real-time basis. Okay. <clears throat> Other example, and I think this will be discussed very much in the next few days on uh, what we say the healthcare side. I mean, there's a lot of instances, examples today where artificial intelligence is changing healthcare segment very fast. And this is where I say the job of a radiologist will turn out to be more of a counselor. And today, radiologist is considered to be a very, very glamorous job in the medicine side. But the fact today is that uh, on a typical day, an average time taken by a radiologist is about 15 minutes to take any kind of, let's say, aspect about this X-rays, MRIs, or CT scans. Imagine artificial intelligence using combinational neural network, CNN, does that particular job for millions of images in flat 15 milliseconds. So what does radiologists do is something what we'll have to figure out. Look at this clip. Can we have the audio, please? 10 second clip. <clears throat> Can we have the audio, please, for this? see that clip but summation of this is this is a final match of a Super Bowl in US a typical Super Bowl match in US consumes about 150 billion dollars worth of advertisements now you'll say what has that got to do with data driven organizations analytics the fact today is that one TV spot in a Super Bowl final match costs about four million dollars a CMO chief marketing officer displaying the ads anywhere is quotient, what is the ROI? What you saw in that 10 second clip are a bunch of brands getting advertised. If you didn't, this is what was the time which in a marketing mix modeling language, what we say got elapsed looking at those brands, whether those brands were splashed on the turf of the stadium or let's say in the player's aisle or somewhere in the stadium or even at the jerseys. That's where the bang of the buck in terms of understanding and extrapolate this thing in terms of the total duration of the match, you can realize that what data-driven organization can do in terms of making life easier for a CMO in front of a CEO. I'll move to the auto automation aspect. This is uh, a case where uh, how the compelling nature of automation or rather human error resulted into automation coming into the picture. This is a U.S. pharmacy store. In U.S., uh, close to about 7,000 deaths happen annually because of wrong prescription. All of us visit pharma pharmacy stores and we also understand that we don't understand what doctors prescribe because that writing is nebulous. 
it can even turn out to be for a pharmacy store also. So what happens? Basis, the whole algorithm set for that particular patient. This machine works in terms of giving the right medicines, right prescription, going into the right counters, taking not only the current prescription but analyzing the historical symptoms, elements of that patient and coming out with those prescriptions at 99.9% .9 accuracy. And let's not forget, in US, which is still prevalent in India, any death happening because of wrong prescription goes into a big lawsuit. So this is where automation comes into the picture. The other example is that now this something uh, good for the HR, I'll take this case uh, viewpoint is, this is a large e-commerce store, as in it, it's a kind of a floor, uh, logistic floor, 24 by 7, 365 days, at any given point of time, shipments work in a mode how people and humans and the workforce move over there. Now for anyone related out here, they'll say, okay, there are cameras over there, tens and thousands of cameras, and what are they doing? Capturing any infringement, any kind of, let's say, trespassing, security issues, that's fine. But the cameras are going beyond where HR heads are sitting and looking at what point of time, because of the facial expressions, the spot of what needs to be given. What is the fatigue level at any given point of time across that shop floor and how we can incentivize that workforce. This is where decision making aspects in terms of data getting captured and getting more non-obvious from different sources acts as I would say catalyst for decision making. I'll skip this example. Uh, this is about distracted driving but I'll move to something which is very interesting today. Sorry, I just... Let me talk about the third trifactor in terms of decision making. Okay, sorry. Okay, someone moving slides on my behalf. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, there you go. Human behavior. I think uh, we all like uh, rules, regulations, uh, those prompt uh, kind of uh, aspects about uh, that unless there is a rule, we won't kind of work. Uh, but I think when you start combining this whole aspect about data and incorporate what we say human behavior through nudges, things turn more magical. I'll give an example today. This is a Oral-B app uh, dashboard. So they have launched a toothbrush which, which has a sensor and there is an app which you can download on the mobile. So what the app does, let's even accept today that beyond the oral hygiene nuances and problems of our kids, we also have an issue. An average brushing time is two minutes. Many of us, I can tell you, don't do that for two minutes. This app, when one, once you download, and anything in terms of less than two minutes, we are all today attracted by emojis. The emoji, less than two minutes, will turn absolutely red fuming. Anything around two minutes, fine, emoji will turn blue, but anything beyond two minutes, emoji will turn happy and there is a jingle which comes on your mobile. An example where just by nudge, you get to change your habits which are often neglected. And this is where we say that eventually data is getting combined in a way where unless design elements or behavioral sciences doesn't come in, you don't get impacted in the way what everyone is looking today. I'll give you another example. Please look at this video clip very carefully.
launched in India. It's so self-explanatory out here that uh, how do you deter, deter pedestrian crossing the road? Paris took, the, took these examples after a lot of initiatives, what they took, went fat. And then they realized, look, somewhere they need to analyze the data at the junctions where this is so recurring phenomena and use behavioral science aspects. And this is where the aspect becomes very clear that today the whole aspect for us is crossing the road, we don't care. But the death, when impression, when, when it gets captured, gives you a real-time aspect that, look, this is what can happen if we ignore. And this is where we say that eventually, it's all about when we talk about data-driven decisions, how do you augment the intelligence? We are all talking about today learning, unlearning, and relearning aspect. That's truth today. The second aspect is that never send a human to do a machine job. Humans are meant for doing something productive. Anyone cleaning, let's say, a skyscraper with those kind of pulleys needs to be told that, look, there is a machine which can do the job and that person can do something else. And I think this is where the economy, the nations are moving, where a lot of that first is being talked about, jobs, automations getting lost. If you look at McKinsey report today, they recently published, 1.8 million jobs will be lost by 2022 because of all these exponential technologies, what Bhupesh talked about, but close to about 2.2 million jobs will be added. So overall, a net additions of almost about half a million jobs, but these new net jobs will be all in the new areas. So this is where the differentiation in, and for the naysayers, I keep on saying, look, let's make the world human first and not AI first. Technology has always been enabler, and we've always trusted the way technology works, but who drive technology? It's human beings altogether. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.